Starfield versus No Man's Sky. Which game deserves game of the year and which should be deleted from your hard drive? Let's hear from our contenders. Will you be able to play with your friends? Yeah. Oh, Sean, careful there. Wouldn't want to say something you might regret. And how would you respond, Todd? All of this just works. That has not been the case in my experience, but let's move on. Hold on, I'm, I'm getting word from our judges. They're what? They're different types of games, but they both take place in space. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll let them know. Well, folks, I've just been informed that Starfield and No Man's Sky are different games trying to achieve different things, so guess that concludes today's episode. Okay, okay, fine, let's do this. But, let's get a couple things out of the way first. One, I won't be addressing Star Citizen. I haven't played it. Call me in 2040 when it leaves early access. I will be mentioning another game. Though. Who's that Pokemon? Number two, I am a Bethesda fanboy. Oblivion is one of my favorite games of all time, and I have sunk a lot of time into every Bethesda game since. Ooh, not you. That said, I also really enjoyed No Man's Sky on release. In fact, most of my playtime was from just after release. And on that note, I should probably play the most recent version of No Man's Sky to be fair. One second. While that's downloading, hit the subscribe button. It helps the channel. You know how this works. Oh, it's done. Okay. I have to be honest. I didn't play that much. I just couldn't get into it. That's on me. I, I fully admit that is on me. If I were in the mood to lo-fi and cruise through space to find the perfect utopian planet to begin building my empire, this would be great. But right now, I'm not, and that's on me. Where No Man's Sky is seemingly filled with almost exclusively personalityless random NPCs with various flavors of science, commerce, or war, selling pointless space junk on identical space stations, though this has definitely seen an improvement over the years with new space station types and an actual story, but from what I've seen, it still pales in comparison to what Starfield has to offer. I'm not even going to attempt to claim that the writing in a Bethesda game amounts to a Shakespearean masterpiece. Be seeing you. No, oh, hello. What is it now? What's going on with you? But at least NPCs have likes and dislikes and a semblance of motivation beyond science, commerce, and war. In Starfield, I actually have incentive to stop and talk to my companion to learn more about them or chat with a shopkeeper beyond our transaction to learn more about their life or the area. In No Man's Sky, I don't even know the name of my frigate captain because what's the point? His motivation is fly the ship. All he does is fly the ship. Starfield's world has history, lore, factions with motivations similar to, but more nuanced than No Man's Sky's science, commerce, war. It makes engagement with the world and its people much more fulfilling. For me, this is the main draw of Starfield. In No Man's Sky, it's a weak addition to the main gameplay that is exploration and outpost building. Conversely, Starfield's addition of exploration and outpost building is extremely weak and boring. Somehow the outpost building has been dumbed down from the intricate possibilities of Fallout 4's base building, which I loved, to do you want a round habitat or square? I think that once modders get access to the creation kit, outpost building and exploration will ultimately become a strong aspect of Starfield and its addition will finally pay off, but at the moment, the fact that it exists only invites comparison to No Man's Sky. That is where I believe Starfield's design faltered. It set itself up to be a smaller No Man's Sky rather than bigger outer worlds. But to be fair, I think opening themselves up to be compared to the likes of Obsidian may not have been great for them either. Here's looking at you, kid. Bethesda is likely once again to be a day late and a buck short with the release of Avowed poised to be before Elder Scrolls 6, and if history is anything to go by, Avowed is likely to be a better RPG. Okay, before I start full-on fanboying over Obsidian, let's get back on track. The reason I even wanted to make this video in the first place was to challenge the awful take that the fact that you can't fly between planets or down to the surface in Starfield somehow makes it worse than No Man's Sky. Ignoring the fact that flying through the clouds in No Man's Sky is basically just a hidden loading screen in the same way the cutscene in Starfield is. It just isn't a major part of the gameplay. It wouldn't add anything of actual value beyond aesthetics. Would it be nice? Sure. Is it necessary? No. Is the UI for traveling a clunky, unintuitive mess? Absolutely, and that is what really should be the focus of criticism. But you don't see criticism of No Man's Sky for not allowing the player to walk around their ship or get out of the cockpit while in space because it isn't a problem. It doesn't detract from the main gameplay loop. A gameplay loop that is completely different from Starfield's loop because they're different types of games that just happen to be set in space. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. 
feel free to flame me in the comments and take a look at my other videos if you want to get mad about my other shitty opinions.